Authentication is important for any application, but rolling your own authentication system is kind of a pain. So in this series, I'm going to be integrating a WPF application with Firebase authentication. So if you're not familiar with Firebase authentication, it's basically a third party authentication service that's quite easy to integrate on the client side and server side and provides tons of different authentication features just out of the box, such as registration, of course, login, and other more complex things like password resets that would be quite a pain to roll on your own. So in order to integrate Firebase authentication with Adobe PF app, first we're gonna have to create a Firebase project and enable authentication. Then we're gonna have to connect our WPF app to Firebase. Then we're gonna have to scaffold out our authentication UI, such as login and registration forms. And then as a bonus part to this application, we're gonna create an ASP.NET backend that's gonna require an authenticated Firebase user in order to get data from. Anyways, what are we waiting for? Let's hop right in and set up our Firebase project. So I've already logged in and I'm on the Firebase console. As you can see, I have tons of projects in here because I actually use Firebase authentication in a lot of things nowadays. But anyways, let's add a new project and we're gonna to have to give this a name. I'm gonna call this secret message. And that kind of sounds lame, but really the idea of this app, it's gonna be pretty small because we're focusing on authentication, but we're gonna have a user that registers and then logs in, and then they can just query some kind of secret message from our API that's gonna require authentication. And then we can confirm this and continue. We're not gonna enable Google Analytics, just focusing on authentication here. And let's create this. All right, project is ready. Let's continue. And first thing we're gonna do is head over to authentication and let's enable authentication. Let's click get started. And here we are on the authentication dashboard. So looking at this, this is another cool thing about Firebase authentication is that there's tons of third party authentication providers that you can use going through like an OAuth flow such as Google or Facebook. But those are pretty complicated to integrate with a WPF application because WPF apps aren't web-based. So the provider we're going to use is just email slash password. So users are going to register and then log in with an email and whatever password they want. So let's select that and enable it. And let's go ahead and save this. And here we go. We got our providers configured. We can also switch over to this users tab to see our users and of course, no one is registered through our project, so we have no users at the moment. So this is pretty much all the work that we have to do in the Firebase console. We're gonna come back here after we set up our WPF app to get the key to connect to our project. But for now, let's get that WPF application set up. So I'm gonna head back into Visual Studio and I have literally just a blank solution right now. So we're starting from scratch and we're gonna create a WPF project. So let's add a new project to our solution, a WPF application. I'm gonna call this secret message dot WPF. I'm gonna target .NET 6, but this should also work on .NET 5, I assume, and probably even .NET Core, who knows, maybe even .NET Framework. Not much has changed with WPF, but let's create this and here we go. All right, now that we got our app created, let's quickly scaffold out all the boilerplate that unfortunately comes with a WPF application, and then connect to Firebase authentication. So for setting up our project, we are going to install a few packages. So let's go manage NuGet packages. First, I wanna set up dependency injection and hosting. So I'm gonna search for hosting, and I want microsoft.extensions.hosting, and I'm on .NET 6, so I'm going to install version 6. Let's add that. Again, this is microsoft.extensions.hosting. And then this is going to be an MVVM project. So I'm going to install my MVVM essentials package, which is called MVVM essentials.wpf by Singleton Sean. And this just includes things like a view model base that implements iNotify property change, some base commands, and even some navigation infrastructure, which is going to be super helpful. So let's install this. Oh, and I should also mention, if you're interested in the contents of this package, I have a video where I actually go through and create this package and show off everything that's inside of it. So I'll be sure to link that so you can wrap your head around anything in this package if you're interested, but it's 
pretty thin, nothing too crazy inside here. Anyways, now that we got packages, let's get into setting up our project and bootstrapping our application. So most importantly, let's change the title of our window. I'll call this secret message. That's the name of our app again. And then I'm gonna go to app.xaml and I'm gonna remove the startup URI because I wanna configure all the startup behavior manually. So let's get rid of that, it's very important. Otherwise you'll end up with two windows appearing if you don't remove that and you add the code that I'm about to add. But now let's go to our app.xaml.cs. So we'll view code on that. And I'm gonna override on startup. So inside of on startup, I wanna resolve my main window from dependency injection and then show it. So to do that, first we are gonna have to set up dependency injection and our host. So let's do that in the constructor of our app. So we're gonna take host and import that from microsoft.extensions.hosting. And we're gonna create the default builder. So the default builder is nice because as it says here, there's pre-configured defaults, such as loading settings from an app settings.json file, which we're gonna get into shortly. So let's definitely use this. And then we are eventually going to build this host and that gives us back an iHost, which we'll put into a field up here. So let's create that I host and initialize that. But before we build the host, let's configure it. So I wanna configure services and we do this with a callback that takes our host context and our service collection that we're gonna register services in. And right now I'm just gonna register my main window and we can just register that as a singleton. So only one main window for the lifetime of our app. So we'll add a singleton Make sure we import this extension method from Microsoft.extensions.dependency injection. And we can register this with a callback. So we are going to register our main window. And the reason I did this with a callback is because I want to do some more configuration here in a second. But now that this is registered, let's resolve that from our host. So we can get our host services and get required service and we want our main window. And let's set that as the main window of our app. So there's this main window property on app. Let's set that. And now that that is set, let's use main window dot show. And now our main window should appear when we run the app. Let's see. And what no service for type secret message dot WPF dot main window has been registered. I thought I did register it. What have I done wrong? Oh, I'm dumb. I registered a function for a main window, which yeah, that, that is what I did. Let me add main window as a type here so I can see what I did wrong. And now we get this type error because it expects services as a parameter. And there we go. Now we're using this method overload where we get a function that takes our service provider and returns a main window in order to register our main window implementation. So now we should get a window. That was a silly mistake. And there we go. We got our window appearing off to a somewhat good start now. And some of you might be making fun of me because I added all this code just to show a main window, but this boilerplate and this structure that we have is going to help us as our application grows. And that being said, now that we have our host set up, we can add an app settings.json that's going to contain the key that we can use to connect to Firebase. So let's come over to our app and let's add a new item. We want to add some kind of JSON file. So let me search for JSON. And I guess we'll just do this JavaScript JSON configuration file, but we'll call this app settings.json. That name is important so that it gets picked up by our host. And let's add that. And let's remove all this generated stuff. I was afraid it was going to do something like that. And let's add a value. We'll call this API underscore key, or no, I should call it Firebase underscore API key. So we know that this is related to Firebase. And now let's head back to our Firebase console. And I'm gonna click on this gear over here and go to project settings. And I want this web API key. So this is what we're gonna to use to connect to Firebase from our app. Let's copy that and let's paste that inside of our app settings.json. And now we should be able to grab that from our host context. So when we configure services, let's use this host context so let's grab that and we should be able to get the configuration and we should be able to call it get value. And I think we need to make this a method should be. Okay. Here's the extension that we have to import. So we have to import Microsoft.extensions.configuration in order to get a value from our app settings.json. That value 
is a string for our API key. And the key to get that value is Firebase API key. So let's pass that in here. And that'll give us back our Firebase API key. So let's make sure this works. Let's put a breakpoint here and run this. And here we go. It is null. So that's not what we wanted. Oh, I've had this issue before. So I believe what we have to do is select this properties file or select this app settings.json and then come over to properties and we need to copy this to the output directory. We can just do, I guess, copy of newer. That works. Let's try this and see if we get the value. And there we go. Yes, we got it. So we got our API key in here. Now we just need to connect to Firebase. So that is a big thing. How are we going to connect to Firebase? And there's plenty of ways you could do this. Firebase actually exposes a REST API that you could use to connect to Firebase authentication. But there is a helper package in the .NET ecosystem that already exists that is called Firebase Authentication.NET. And it allows us to interface with Firebase authentication. So let's install that NuGet package. Let's go to manage and NuGet packages and let's search for Firebase authentication. And here we go. So Firebase authentication.net. Kind of weird that the net is all lowercase. I'm not used to seeing .net like that. But anyways, it's a great package. Let's install it. And now back in our app.xaml.cs, we can connect to Firebase using that package. So that package uses something called a Firebase auth provider that we can initialize and that's like a facade to interact with Firebase authentication. So let's create that. It's a Firebase auth provider and let's import that from firebase.auth, which is that package that we just installed. That's its namespace and that's the Firebase auth provider and let's initialize that. It takes a Firebase config. So let's create that and ta-da, that takes an API key. So let's pass in our Firebase API key. And actually, I'm just going to straight up register this in dependency injection. So rather than initializing it and putting it into a variable, let's just take our service provider and we can add this as a singleton and just register that initialized Firebase auth provider. And now we can resolve this anywhere in our app and use it to do something with Firebase authentication. So for example, down here in our own startup, Let's resolve our Firebase auth provider and put that into a variable. And now that we have this, we could do something like create user with email and password async. And I can just throw something in here. So I think we can just do any email. We'll do test.gmail.com and we'll just create a random password test123 exclamation point. And this will actually create a user. So let's put a breakpoint here. Make sure we get our Firebase auth provider resolved, which we do. So let's continue. All right. We don't have a UI or anything, so we just get a blank screen. But if I come back to the Firebase console and then we go to authentication, as you can see, our user was created. And that's pretty much just how easy it is to register a new user. But obviously in this series, we want to integrate this with WPF, have some kind of registration form and some kind of command that'll execute this for us. And we also want to do that for logging in and probably have UIs for other authentication features too. So that's where we're going to pick this up next time, really integrating this with WPF and building out the UI. But we've gotten through the setup. So first off, we created a Firebase project. So we got our secret message project and we enabled authentication set up our sign in method for email password, which is the easiest to integrate with from a WPF application. And then we created our WPF project, installed some packages, and then set up this boilerplate to get our application bootstrapped with the .NET host. Then we snagged our Firebase API key from the Firebase console, plop that into a new app settings.json, and then grab that key when we configure services so that we could ultimately register our Firebase auth provider that is part of the Firebase authentication.net package. And then I even did a little sneak peek of how we could register a user using the Firebase auth provider, which we can see in the console. So hopefully you can apply this to your own WPF application to get set up with Firebase authentication.
Anyways, if you have any questions, criticisms, or concerns, be sure to leave those below in the comment section. If you enjoyed the video or are enjoying the channel, consider becoming a member. Other than that, leave a like and subscribe for more. Thank you, and stay tuned for more Firebase authentication and WPF integrations.